Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obit Potato, and here we check out the latest and the greatest strategy games each and every day of the week. Today, we're checking out a game called Combine and Conquer, which is an automation game uh, with a couple of really interesting elements, which I am going to get to. Uh, but also, I, I need to say, uh, it's in a very basic place at the moment. Uh, it looks very, very funky indeed. Uh, that may very well be for a couple of reasons, which we will dive into very shortly. Uh, but yeah, this is Combine and Conquer. It's an automation game um, that is focused on scale and also interplanetary sort of exploration, which is really, really cool. You can see the sort of solar system over here. Uh, we are going to be putting down our base of operations uh, on Planet Hope, which I think is probably, well, it's the best planet uh, for us. Uh, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, when we zoom in, we will start to see these resource deposits start to emerge. Now, very, very important that we try and find a location for our initial... Uh, initial operation to go that is surrounded by all of the different types of resources. So we got stone, iron ore, uh, coal, and copper as well. So stone and coal look quite similar. Uh, coal is outlined in white, stone is just gray. So what we do, what we do in the first instance, uh, is we build what's called a starter, which is literally like a base of operations. I think, to be honest... I think to be honest, like somewhere like here is probably good. We got stone, we got stone, we got stone. We we got not not, not got very much coal. Let me uh let me try again. Let me try and find somewhere a little bit more appropriate. Yeah, I think that's good. So we got stone, coal, iron, and copper. Okay, cool. Let's place it here. So uh we build what's called a starter, right? So a starter. Uh, basically contains all of the resources that we need to get our operation up and running. It provides energy and it provides influence, which you can see uh, as donated by the white area here. Uh, and that area of influence is going to allow us to build stuff, which is great news. So, as I say, it's an automation game. It's got a couple of twists. It looks very sort of rudimentary. The UI is a bit janky, but you know what? Don't let that uh, deter you. It's available for like five bucks on Steam uh, slash itch at this very moment in time. Cool. Okay. So we got our resources. We've got our starter operation. We know where we are in the planetary system. How do you play the game, Potato? I'm about to explain it. And I want to say everything about this game um, is available or all the information that is available about this game uh, is available in a document. There is no tutorial. Um, that screen that you saw at the very start uh, was what was what uh, was what the game opens up on. So there's no there's no sort of title screen or anything like that. So just beware uh, if you're going to learn about this game, it's probably going to be through a video or through the, the the manual, which is actually quite good at explaining exactly what the heck is happening. Anyway, let's get let's get down to playing. So we've got our build menu over here. Uh, we've got belts. We've got uh, you know uh, robot arms, just like Factorio, which the soundtrack is playing in the background. By the way, we've got some assemblers. We've got some mines. Let's get ourselves. Let's get ourselves some mines specifically on the iron and on the coal, and we will get some arms to operate the resource uh, resource movement out of these areas. So after that, we're going to get some belts. We're, we're going to do a very sort of basic operation here to try and demonstrate exactly what the heck is going on. There we go. Beautiful. We're going to get some more arms here, and then we're going to go into the processing menu, and we're going to pick up the furnace burner. Now... The furnace burner does exactly what you would expect. It turns the coal and the iron into iron plate. Um, it's just that simple. Uh, after that, we're going to export from here. Uh, we could buffer. Uh, we do have the opportunity to build a chest, but I'm not going to bother with that at this very moment in time uh, because that brings that brings into uh, that brings into contention the next area of uh, significant importance for us. So if we have a little look at belts, for example, we can see that there is a number donated just towards the left of the belt over there, 61. Uh, that is how many we have in stock. Now, you get a certain number of all of these buildings uh, at the very start, but after that, it's incumbent on you as the player to make the items which you are going to use like around your base. So it's pretty important that we get get uh that we get manufacturing stuff pretty darn quickly so that we can get up to speed now um if we go into this menu over here this menu is the item menu as opposed to the structure menu it's basically a list of uh, a, a list of recipes on what it takes to build um, a specific building. So example, uh, the belt mark one requires one iron plate and one iron gear as donated uh, by the fact that it's red down there. Uh, so 
what we are going to do is we're going to place down an assembler. Uh, we're going to place down an assembler over about here. We're going to place down another assembler over about here. And we're going to connect things up. Now, we know that we want to build a belt. So let's go into here. Let's set that as a belt. There we go. We can see that we need one iron plate and one iron gear. Uh, we will go into the processing category, which shows all of the different things that are sort of like intermediate uh, components, as well as the assembler and as well as the stone burner. And we will say, yep, let's build the iron gear. That costs just one iron plate. Either way, these recipes, pretty sort of basic. We'll get things set up. I'm not looking for uh, an overly sort of complicated setup for this. Uh, I just want to make sure that we've got at least a little bit of production of all of the resources that I think that we're going to need. Uh, yep, so this is fine. Now, bear in mind, we don't have much, much belt stuff at the moment. We don't have a splitter. We don't have anything like that. So this is maybe not the best way of doing things, but it's definitely one of the ways that we're going to that we're gonna do things. So uh, occasionally, uh, this arm is going to kick into gear and we're going to get a, a, a bespoke... Um, a bespoke thingy, a bespoke bar of iron sent all the way up there. We're going to get this to move the gears between the two machines. And you can see there's a little progress bar at the bottom. It's highlighted in purple. You can see how long it takes, the time just above it. Uh, you can see the little progress bar uh, moving forward. Boom. And there we go. It's, it's processing, which is great. Okay. So after the belt has been built, what we do... Uh, is we take it out, and what we do is we put it into a special a special machine called a provider, of which we have 10, and any structure that's placed into this provider goes back into our goes back into our overall goes back into our overall mix. Uh, what's the issue here? We're waiting for more iron plates? That's completely fine. This is a self sort of fixing system, because it means that every time every time we've got more than enough iron gears and iron plates backed up, um, we should just you know, release more onto this specific belt over here. It's not the most sophisticated, but it's absolutely fine to get us going for now. And I just want to see that that number is going to increase from 55 to 56 as soon as that goes into a provider. Boom. There we go. Okay, we're making belts. We are off to the races. We're on to a winner here. That's great. So, so far, so, so basic. There's nothing too complicated about this uh, thus far. I'm okay with that. Um, it's it's all working. It's all working nicely. There are a couple of other things that I maybe want to get set up. Um, the assembler, the assembler recipe is eight gears uh, and eight stone bricks. Uh, so we probably should get that set up. Let's maybe let's maybe get uh, let's maybe get a little bit of a stone mine operation on the go. Excuse me. There we go. Excellent. Uh, yeah. What's the recipe for the mine as well? Let me just check. It's four screws. Four iron plates. Okay, I don't think that I want to be building the mine anytime, uh, anytime soon. Uh, what about stone bricks? What do screws take? Screws take literally just iron plates. Uh, let me see what, let me see what this mine mines up here. There we go. Yeah, I think we need to get, I think we need to get the stone bricks in the, in the furnace, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so stone bricks, stone bricks. I do believe we we get in the we get in the furnace. So let's see if we can try and immediately place down a burner like right about over there. Is there another coal source? I mean, there's a coal source right over here, potato. I don't know what you're what you're moaning about. I also need to get a. I also need to get some arms. Arms are two iron plates and two gears as well. Okay, that's fine. Um. And actually, that's going to allow me to demonstrate something very, very interesting. So hold that thought, Potato, whilst uh, whilst you wait. Whilst you wait. Whilst you wait. Because things are going to get funky. Things are going to get really funky. Right. So let's set up a nice little belt system. Nothing too complicated. It does look ugly, but it's not complicated. Okay. So that's going to get us a little bit of coal. We should still have plenty of coal to feed everything. I'm very, very happy with how this is all looking. So far, so good. Okay, uh, we'll get the we'll get the stone up here, smelting stone. We'll get that smelted as soon as this arrives. Great, happy days. Um, whilst we're waiting for that, let's have a little look at what's going on down in the bottom left-hand corner here. Uh, you can see. Uh, this is our energy interface. Um, so we've got uh, our brightness level up at the top. It's 35 out of 70. Uh, you can see that we're using 219. Uh, we are producing five out of 500 out of 500, and we're storing zero. 
the 500 energy that we're getting is being produced at the starter. That's symbolized by the NRG. I get energy. Oh, I, I, that makes sense, I suppose. Um, and then you can see, yeah, energy, energy is four, energy is four, energy is five, you know. So there's energy usage sort of stats pretty much, uh, pretty much sort of everywhere. Right. Um, I need to be able to make an assembler, right? I need to be able to make an assembler. That's eight gears and eight stone bricks. Uh, what's the best way of going about doing this? I mean, I could always just like nab gears from somewhere else. I could always nab gears from somewhere else, but I feel like that's kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, I mean, we can limit stuff. We can do, we can definitely do limit stuff, but I'm not particularly sure that I want to do that yet. Maybe I don't even need to build an assembler. I mean, look, I've got 10 of them, I've got 13 of them. I've got loads, I've got loads and loads of them. Uh, maybe we should just try and build, maybe we should just try and build some other stuff. Uh, I mean, the arms we definitely need to build. The arms we absolutely categorically need to build. Yeah. We also need to get a better sort of smelting setup here. I am not... I am very, very not happy with how this looks. We're going to get... We're going to get an arm set up. Oh, this is... <laughs> it's so challenging to do this when, when there is... <laughs> when there is, like, such obviously terrible options uh, for how to... <laughs> how to handle... For how to handle this. Um... I mean, uh, so here's the thing. There is a research, there is a research tech tree, right? There is a research tech tree and there's a bunch of interesting stuff in here. Uh, arms Mark II, you know, we can get faster arms. Long arms, I'm really interested in seeing long arms so that I can, <laughs> so that I can find a not terrible way of like moving iron from here to here. <laughs> but that is going to be, that is going to be nasty. Hold on, is there a better way that we can do this? I think there must be a better way that we can do this. Yeah, le okay, let me, let me, uh, let me try and redo this right over here. Because let's be, let's be frank, we're going to need to get some additional iron production. And we'll try and run this sort of through the middle. Right. Two iron. I really need to stop using two. I'm using two kind of like as a default, but I really don't need to be. Okay, this is going to work. Here's my idea. This is it. This is this is what we're going to do. It's very it's very basic, but it is but it's going to work. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Do this. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. So that is going to be. That is going to be a lot of goodies for us. That is going to be a lot, a lot of goodies. Let's get two burners right in there. Perfect. Okay, so that's going to be a whole heap. A whole heap of iron plate coming through here. Um, we shouldn't have any issues as far as I'm concerned. So that's good. Uh, and I should note, by the way, that all resources are infinite, so we don't really have to worry about anything. It just it just works, and it works forever. And that's a theme that we're going to be like returning to again and again and again. Right. Let's talk about the big one in this game. And let's let's talk about what sets this game apart from other automation games. Um, and I guess what is really, really interesting. And that is uh, the module interface. Now, this may not look like much, but I'm about to blow your mind um, because it's actually like ridiculously cool. So uh, what we need to do is we need to basically find a way to manufacture arms, right? We need to manufacture arms. We know what arms are made of. It's two iron plates and two gears. So far, uh, so good. We know what gears are made of. Gears are made of iron plates. It's it's just that simple. So what we can actually do, what we can actually do here, and this is exactly what we're going to do, is we are going to set up, we're going to set up a module, uh, a module to produce exactly what we're looking for. Now, what is a module? I hear you ask. Well, a module is a replicatable is a replicatable structure type um, that you can place in the real world. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build, we're going to build something much like you would see, you know, in the, in the real world, except it's going to be in modular form here. So we're going to set this to manufacture gears. We're going to set this to manufacture arms. Um, and hopefully, 
You can probably see where this is going, but it's all sort of coming together now. It's all sort of coming together in a very, very nice way. There we go. This is our module, or this is what a module could look like. And I'll demonstrate exactly exactly what, um, what it does. It works exactly like it does in the real world, but what you do is you modularize it. So uh, we've got a source chest. It spawns items for specific inputs. We can set the chest to, to do what we want to, to, to do what we want it to. I think it's this way, yeah, um, or this way, for example. Um, but either way, uh, we give it a blueprint. Uh, we tell it what to do, and then it makes the thing, and then it outputs the thing at the sync chest. So we've got the source chest and we've got the sync chest. So we have the input chest and we've got the output chest. And you literally have the iron coming in and then out pops, boom, out pops uh, an arm. It's it's cool as heck. So, um, I mean, this is, this is, this is working. This is working like an absolute charm. This is absolutely working. Uh, like an absolute charm. Uh, there are a couple of things that we do need to consider. Um, you can actually like run the the sort of simulation in like fast speed, which we're not going to do. I need to, uh, yeah, there we go. Restart the simulation here. Um, so we can do this. There's a whole bunch of other things that we can that we can do. Like we can sort of set the limit. Um, so we can set the limit to, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to set it to, to W, uh, but we can set the limit of say, you know, we can set it to like five, for example, set this limit to five, set this limit to five as well on the output, five inputs, five outputs. Um, and the reason that you might want to do this is that that sets when a machine setup will start working and when it will stop working. Although we should probably set it to a we should probably set this to two, um, and then we'll probably leave this at five over there. So what we then do is we then click, uh, in fact, let's maybe set this to, let's maybe set this to 10. Uh, and the reason why we want to set it to 10 is so that we always have like, um, so that we always have pieces in motion as opposed to waiting for anything specific to happen. But the lower this number is, basically, the sooner that it's going to be able to start work. Anyway, I've chatted long enough. Let's modularize. Let's call this arm maker. Boom. Module arm maker added. We can skip on over to this module interface and you can see right here. Uh, and then we go back to the planet. You can see that we are going to be able to literally, literally make this literally make this. So let's place it down. We'll place it down like so. Um, we've got a couple of different options as to whether we want to see the inside. We can actually just see the input and we can see the output, which I feel is actually like quite nice. Uh, but I also kind of like seeing the, you know, seeing what's going on inside. Um, so that's what we're, that's what we're going to have. Anyway, um, the advantage of this system is that it allows you to very, very, very easily scale up and very, very easily simplify uh, excuse me? What do we... Do we not have any arms available? Well, that's... That's okay, because, I mean, we've just... We've literally just made arms. What I should say as well is that um, all of the machines in here do count towards your total, so it's not like you're getting, like, three uh, machines or anything like that. It, it you know, it all, it all does count uh, towards the stuff. Anyway, let's get rid of these two arms for now and add that in there. Cool. So as you can see... Things are going slowly, but things are going things are going confidently towards uh, the right direction. Let's get an output over here. Let's get a special provider chest right over there. Um, we've still got eight available, so that's great. So we really should have, we really should have in no time at all a whole bunch of a whole bunch of good stuff going. Now, as I say, that limit is very very important because this entire process is only going to start working when it's got 10 uh, bits of iron ore, but that's okay. Uh, we can obviously uh, increase our inputs into, there we go, it's turned purple. Very cool indeed. And we need to, we need to give it, we need to give it a little bit of time to, to get through, to get through its workload. And then no doubt something is going to emerge over here. Hopefully, if it works, then it works. But it's a bit, it's a bit complicated, but that's the sort of basic, that's the sort of basic premise of it. Um, we should see it, we should see it emerge, I hope, uh, very shortly indeed, which is, which is going to be great. Either way, that's kind of it. That is, that is the, that is the module interface. 
I absolutely adore it. I think it's really, really, really cool. Um, it looks, it looks really good, doesn't it? Is this working? Is this working? I hope it's, I hope it's not going to be something to do with the tick rate. The tick rate is something that I <laughs> barely understand. Um, I mean, I think I kind of understand it, but um, we'd have to go into the module and readjust and readjust a few bits and bobs to make it to make it all work. Uh, I, I, I would really appreciate if you just worked so that I don't have to go and faff around with this. Yeah, you're not going to worry. Oh, no, you are. You are working. You are working. You are working. You're just working pretty slowly by the looks of things. Yeah. I mean, two minutes and 40 seconds for the for the cycle to complete is quite a lot. I mean, hold on. If I go back into modules here, if I go back into the planner, what we can actually do, this is... <laughs> what we can actually do is we can change... We can change the length of time that it takes um, for everything for everything to happen. So we can modularize to like a thousand, right? So we give it a we give it a test, a thousand, a thousand ticks. Um, we'll see how far we get with a thousand ticks. How about that? Yeah. Does it give us enough? Does it give us enough time? See, I, it's this is this is a terrifying aspect of yeah game automation that I. Uh, Let's have a look. 1,200. There we go. Yeah, this is a terrifying aspect of, uh, of sort of, you know, automation in this game that I uh, that I really am terrified to, like, get to grips with because I really don't understand how it works. Let's just keep in increasing the... Keep increasing that. Okay, uh, sure. Modularize that. Arms. Arms again. There we go. Okay, arms again added. Let's do this in here, this in here. Oh, hold on. It actually totally worked. Okay, you know what? Forget forget that. Um, good. We're in a good place. Basically, uh, the tick rate... The tick rate determines how long it takes to do a given action in the module. Um, I really don't understand how it sort of all connects together, uh, but that's probably, that's probably to be fair, just me rather than uh, the game and the way that the game works. The point is, is that it should be working. Although if I did want to build, if I did want to build this, it may very well build um, a bit faster. Can't afford five arms. That is uh, not a problem. We'll just ditch that module. Again, it's kind of great that we can do that. We can we can ditch it all, like, literally, like, so. We do lose a little bit of iron, but that's not necessarily too problematic. Right, so we've got two arms ready. What do I want to do with my other arms? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I want to do. I want to start working through this research tech tree. Like, that is really, really important to me. Um, and what we need to do is we need to build research modules. Now, how on earth do we build research modules? Let's, let's have a little look. Uh, is it in... It'll be in... It's not in space, it's not in special, it's in research modules. There we go. RT1. It's one gear and one iron plate. And it's going to take 256, 256 seconds to make it happen. How's that looking? How's that looking? Are we are we making headway? Are we making headway? Are we able to, are we able to see it work? It looks like it's working. It looks like it's working. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Is it working at a decent enough rate? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the entire block, by the way, costs 33 energy. So that is that is definitely noteworthy. Anyway, uh, it's literally just a gear. Hey, look at that. It's, that's cool. Uh, it's literally just a gear. It works. It works perfectly. That is that is nice. Okay, so let's see if we can try and set up. Let's see if we can try and set up an assembly line for this. Um, do I want to get? I'm gonna get one of these. Let's get one of these. I feel like I've not set this module up correctly, but I hope that it's at least sort of semi-apparent what I'm trying to do. Let's get that over there. Boom. That's cool. Here we go. Let's get some belts, for which I've got 84 now. That's really nice. That's cool. Du -du 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 -du. And yeah, see, I feel like I'm losing. I feel like I'm losing like a lot of um, like a lot of modules. Like every single time I do the I do the cycle. Let me uh, let me actually go back and see if I can modify the planner uh, a little bit a little bit better. If I go to hold on set limit, set this to 
what do I need to set it to? Two? If I set that to two, then that's going to allow this to come through. And that should work pretty much as it does. Oh, actually, no. Tell a complete lie. That's... We need two. So that needs to be at four. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that gets set to four. That should work much better. We go into fast ticking. We can see that it'll all work. Excellent. And that gets us exactly what we need. Okay. Modularize that. Let's do it at arm's best. Beautiful. You love to see it. Third time's a charm. This is the complicated, this is the complicated aspect of this game. Let me, let me tell you. Uh, I can't afford that. I need to delete this one first. Let's do it. Just suffer. Just suffer. Suffer now. Suffer now whilst we're, whilst we're dealing with it. Cool. Okay, how's this looking? It's not looking too bad apart from the fact that we are waiting for a little bit of coal to come through here. That's fine. Okay, so, um, iron. We definitely need more iron. We definitely need more legs. That's all good. Uh, yeah, so this is gonna go, this is gonna go over here. Duh, 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 duh. I need this. I need some arms. Why do I need two there? Why do I, why on earth do I need two arms there? We really, really don't. There we go. We are mobilized. We are going. We are, we are in a good place. This is taking a fairly long time to get enough coal. Can I maybe... Can I maybe split this? Sure. I kind of can, can I? Yeah, there we go. No issues there. We also need to do something with this stone, and I've not done anything at all. So, there we go. Right, coal's fixed. That's good. Let's get this... Let's get this back on the mend. What did I need? I needed gears. Nice. Gears there. And let's ditch this. And in fact, actually, let's make it in this sort of orientation rather than anything else. The assembler up here. We'll go. There we go. Nice. And we should be able to make science. Now, I don't know if I need to provide this to a provider or I need to provide it to... Or I need to provide it to anything else. But I guess we shall, I guess we shall see. Right, we got two machines available. Let's utilize them. That's great. Happy days. This seems to be working, this seems to be working exactly as intended now. This is, this is good. I think this is, I think this is fine. So the ratio of all of the goods seems to be working. We've got the appropriate amount of input. We've got the appropriate amount of output. So that's looking, that's looking good. Let's see if we can try and get some science here. Uh, we can stick it into a chest. We can stick it into a provider. Let's see where it needs to go in order to be best utilized. Either way, I'd like to build a lot of it, please. Right. Science. Let's... Let's make a guess. Now, I think it's probably going to be... I think it's probably going to be... Uh, oh, we can build a lab, actually. Which we can't afford at the moment. How do I build a lab? Chips and wires speeds up research by consuming tokens. See, that's the thing. I believe that we can just... Um, running low on power. Ooh, yeah. So that's a uh, bit, bit nasty. Maybe we do need to input them directly into a lab. Um, that may very well be the case. I think we may need to put them into a lab. Either way, I mean, look, this is the... <laughs> this is the... This is the problem. This is the problem with... Uh, this is the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to stick it into a lab. This is the problem. Like everything, everything in this document, every reference point in this document is literally <laughs> is literally is literally a document that I'm referencing. Anyway, um, how do we get a lab? How do we get a lab? We need to produce it, right? We need eight chips and four wire, which means that we need to input iron plate and copper plate too. Now that that is going to be a challenge. That is going to be a real challenge. Uh, so we need eight chip and wire. Okay, I tell you what, this is exactly, this is exactly why, uh, we want to jump back into the planner. Uh, let's, which is the clear button. Yeah, remove the current blueprints. Uh, 
no, give me a new blueprint. That's exactly what we need. Okay, let's get some assemblers down. Let's get an input down. Let's get an output down. Let's have a little look-see. So we know the target. We know the target is a laboratory building. So we'll set that as the target and then we'll sort of just work backwards from that. So let's have a look at this. We'll get wire over here. Wire is very, very simple. It's just copper plate. That's good. Uh, we'll get a chip set up as well. Let's do it over here. Sure. You know, we can we can mix it up, mix it up a little bit. Get a chip set up over here. That requires one wire. That requires one wire and also a iron plate. So we need literally just iron and copper plates. I mean, I know that's kind of obvious, but that's fine. Two wire make or two wire from one copper plate. And we require four over there. Let's let's get a um let's get another another one of these and let's do um let's do another copper wire factory. It's maybe not the Maybe not the best, but we'll make it we'll make it happen nonetheless. Right, so here's what I'm currently thinking. We have as an input area for copper up here. Doesn't particularly need to be overly tight, but probably should be. Right, let's set this to copper over there. Great. I mean, yeah, it's efficiency, efficiency be damned. This is, this is good enough. Either way, that will work. That's good. That feeds through, that feeds through quite nicely. Let's then take a secondary input. Literally, I guess needs to go there, doesn't it? Uh, stick that in there like so. And then we're able to get the outputs. I mean, regardless of where we do it, it's going to end up looking, looking kind of funky, isn't it? The answer to that is pretty much yes. <laughs> pretty much yes. I'm too committed to this. I'm too committed to this boxy, awful design. Yeah. Okay, I mean that gets us that gets us labs. It's kind of nice. So yeah, 46, 37. I mean, we don't have any copper processing. That's the that's the sort of overwhelming that's the sort of overwhelming problem. Let's Let's uh let's reset the reset the simulation. I do kind of want to modularize the ticks, although again, I really don't understand what that does. Set this to 1. Let's set this to what is it? 8 and 6. There we go. Uh 8 I think it was copper, right? Uh 8 iron plates. And six copper plates. Six copper plates. Okay. So that's good. That should work. Um, the next question is the the ticks. How long does it take to get all of the to get all of the ticks? Uh, Seven thousand one hundred and sixty-eight. Is that what I should set it to? I think that's what I should set it to. Seven thousand one hundred and sixty-eight. Okay, so that's all hopefully going to work together and give me one lab, which uh, it doesn't. So that's just, <laughs> that's great. Let's set to 10,000. Sure. Set to 10,000. Reset. Okay. Uh, that also didn't work. Why are you not, why are you not outputting the, uh, the resources that I'm after? Uh, do we need more copper? We absolutely do need more copper. Okay, tell you what we need to do. We need to take... Uh, that's not what I'm doing. We need to set this to 10. There we go. The reason being is that copper was... Yeah, copper was going into the wrong place. And that goes in there like so. Okay, that's good. Let's modularize that. Let's call this uh, lab maker... I have absolutely no idea if this is either going to work, going to be feasible, but we're going to give it a we're going to give it a punt nonetheless. Um, I also have absolutely no power uh, with which to do this, so that's fun. That's very very fun. That is excellent. Do I have all of the rest of the components though? Running low on power. Uh, apparently so. 
Yeah, apparently I've got plenty. Okay, well, that's good news at least. Right, so the the lab maker is going to be making stuff down here. Let's get let's get a very sort of simple copper setup. Just one. I I'm I'm trying not to overdo it. Okay, good. Copper needs to go over here. Iron needs to go over there. That's fine too. Okay. Nice. Apart from that little cheeky bit. Excellent. Okay, we will have copper smelting up and running very, very soon, which is great. Iron smelting? Can we do iron smelting? I mean, we could maybe just drag a bit extra off this, this belt. Um, or we could just put more stuff on this belt, which I think I'm probably favoring right now. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, more stuff on this belt. Let's offload... Over here, we get one more iron smeltery operation. It looks horrific, but the great news is is that I don't have to deal with it for much longer. Uh, we are low on energy. I am going to fix that. Don't worry. I am absolutely going to fix that. Don't uh, don't you worry. I'm going to fix it very shortly. Right. Let's get another mine in here. Well, actually, tell you what, if I'm going to place one mine, I might as well place it in a slightly more optimal position. Right in the right in the corner there. Okay. The good news is, I mean, look, we've got plenty of belt. We've got absolutely plenty of belt. 96 belts and also uh, six arms as well, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's feed this down here. That's fine. And copper outputs. Which again, I'm not buffering. Uh, we're gonna bring, <laughs> we're gonna bring, for now because we have no other way of doing it. We're gonna bring it all the way around. You know what? I actually was pretty happy with how I did there. Okay, that's looking, that's looking good. That's looking good. Then we have one last output, and the output leads into a provider which I'm clicking through all the buttons to find, even though I know exactly where it is, and that's good. Okay, uh, power-wise, we are massively overproducing, or should I say underproducing at the moment. I need to get a burner, um, a burner to make to make power. 100, 100 energy. Uh, that's stone, that's stone. If I toggle my, oops, toggle my influence area on, we can see that this is the only coal patch. Okay, fine, well... That's fine. Okay, so far so good though. I gotta be honest, so far so good. I'm I'm not too displeased with how this is all looking. Bring this down here. Nice. Well, not perfect, but it's it'll do for now. <laughs> As is the way with so many things in life, it will do for now. Because it has to. <laughs> there is no other alternative. Right, so how many of these did we get? We got like 20. Okay, I'll place down the, the few that I have. To be honest, we only need to get like three down anyway. Uh, the real question is whether we will have enough to sustain our current amount of burning. There we go, that's two. We get a third one. Up and running. Yeah. You know, we might just have enough coal coming in on this, coming in on this belt. Either way, uh, that's it. That's it. That's it working. Uh, we need a little bit more copper. We're waiting for just those last few bits of copper to come through. And then immediately this is going to kick into gear, which is great. That's looking really, really good. Oh, cool. I didn't even, I didn't even realize we can toggle, toggle progress onto everything. That's kind of nice. Um, but also maybe I'll turn that off for now. Just because it is a bit, uh, it is a bit distracting. Either way, that's looking, that's looking very, very good. What I should have done, I'm now realizing, is put down a chest, put down a chest over here, so that we could actually make a whole bunch of uh, research 
and I just didn't do that because I just didn't. Uh, but there we go. That's all. That's all fine. This is all looking good. How long before we get ourselves a? You know, I am gonna leave this on. Um, how long before we get ourselves a lab? Not long, to be honest. Not long at all. I think we will be quite close to getting a lab up and running, which is actually uh, quite startlingly exciting, which is great. Also, these uh, sun levels, I presume that's got something to do with the solar panel, but I haven't actually checked out the, the research tree to see what uh, to see what there is here. Uh, right, so what can we research at level one? Long arms, obviously, uh, although they are very small. They're very small long arms because of the fact that they are so long. Uh, what is this? This looks like a splitter to me. Yeah, two belt mixing can make it possible to mix and swap two belts. That's so useful. Like, that would be so, so handy to just have two resources on, like, one single belt. That would be great. Uh, crossings allows the creation of belt intersections. That's, like, junctions, if you've uh, ever played Mindustry before. Uh, this looks like solar over here. Solar structures, very, very cool indeed. What do we got down at the bottom? Electric furnaces, Mark V. Assembly, Mark V. Flow control. Oh, Look at all this stuff. We got better mines. We got better belts. What's this? Uh, faster version of the arms. Longer versions of the arms. What is this? Is this uh, influence increase? Yeah, unlocks a version of influence with even larger range. That's cool. Yeah, there is a building that we can use uh, utilize to increase our influence range, uh, which is this one right here. We've got ten. We've got ten of them, so we can actually use them, but we just haven't thus far. Right? Have I got a lab yet? Have I got a lab? I've got a lab! I've got a lab! I've got a lab. Okay. Let's... Let's put it down. We are running low on power. Yeah, let's, um... Let's fix that. Let's fix that. There we go. Good stuff. We're back in business, baby. Beautiful. Okay. And then let's start... Let's start looking at science. Fantastic. Uh, it's just a matter of... It's just a matter of offloading all of the science into the machine. And we are able to, we're able to get science. What do I want to set my science to be spent on? I have absolutely no idea. Long armed, long armed inserters are, are a good one. Sure. So how far, how far are we through that? Uh, one out of 200. That's a heck of a lot of research to be doing. But to be fair, I mean, we need to be automating. And it's not actually that difficult to automate, like, anything at the moment. Uh, I mean, it's not difficult to automate necessarily anything we just need to really scale up all of the different individual components like we've got everything that we need to get um and that's the kind of like really really satisfying thing oh it's the research is down in the bottom uh, the bottom left hand corner there um yeah that's the really satisfying thing right is that what you do is you just build you build these modules in mind and you're able to you know clearly customize them to a degree which uh would be completely lost or is completely lost i should say uh on me so, look, have a little play around with it yourself, ladies and gents. Uh, let me know if you're interested, because I am I am very, very, very curious to see where this game goes. Um, I didn't even get to the sort of space mechanics. There's a whole sort of space bit. Like, I know titanium uh, is not unlockable on this on this planet. Um, I don't even know how to get to space. I don't even know what the what the heck what the heck we have to we have to go down. I think it's is it this one? Yeah, space. Makes it possible to colonize new planets and transport items between them. I mean, come on. Come on. You love to see it. Right. Anyway, uh, ladies and gents, we're going to wrap this one up now. Thank you ever so much for watching. My name, of course, has been Open Potato. Uh, this has been Combine and Conquer. I'd encourage you to check it out. It's very, very cheap on both Steam and itch.io right about now. Um, and yeah, thank you ever so much for watching. Check out the Patreon if you're interested in helping make videos like this possible. But for now and from me, my name's Open Potato. I'll see you next time. Bye.